the tale to tell. Speak to the locals around here and they'll tell you that this temple and its stunning folly gardens was built as an illicit love nest of a local reverend. Now, in the 17 and 81 property. Gosh, Sweet. what a surprise! I didn't expect that this to be up here. <laughs> oh. Then the mystery house leaves them lost for words. Today I'm in Gloucestershire and this is the rather quirky temple and folly gardens of Stancomb Park. Designed by the Reverend David Pennell Edwards in the 19th century, local legend has it that aided by his wife's large dowry, he built the temple for secret trysts with a beautiful gypsy girl. Now, to ensure that his wife didn't catch him, apparently he also built a series of tunnels and steep paths that were just too narrow for his rather portly wife to squeeze through. Whether he was successful in this rather devious ploy or not is unknown, but one thing's for sure, he certainly achieved his vision of creating a breathtaking landscape in this county, which has plenty more fantastic views on offer. Lying in the southwest of England, Gloucestershire shares a border with Wales and the English counties of Worcestershire, Oxfordshire and Wiltshire. The region encompasses part of the flat, fertile valley of the River Severn and the entire Forest of Dean. Gloucestershire is perhaps best known as the heart of the Cotswolds, with around two-thirds of the Cotswold area of outstanding natural beauty falling within its boundary. In the 18th century, after the publication of William Gilpin's book, Observations on the River Wye, the county's Wye Valley region quickly became a hotspot for British tourism. And today, visitors from all over the world still flock to this picture postcard part of England. All this beauty comes at a price. The average cost of a detached house in Gloucestershire is just under £287,000. Now that's £31,000 more than the national average. Now searching in the villages around Stroud to the south of the county or the Forest of Dean out to the west will make your money go a little bit further. However, if it's the sought after Cotswolds villages that you'd like to call home, do expect to pay up to 10 to 15 percent more than in the time to meet today's buyers and find out why they're ready to escape to the country. IT project manager Steve and his head teacher wife Sue have lived in their five bedroom house in Bristol for the past 24 years. But now their two daughters have flown the nest, they're planning the move to the country that Steve has been yearning for. I think for the last 20 years I've been trying to convince Sue that we should move out to the country and she's been uh, stalling me. I was a country girl, so I was born in Herefordshire in a village. So I moved into the city and loved it. And Steve's a city boy and would love to go to the country, so I've had my way, so it's his turn now. Now it's my time. <laughs> This house is not ideal for us anymore because our kids have grown up, the girls have grown up, so it's too big for us and it's in the middle of town and we want to move. They're aiming for rural Gloucestershire, within 50 minutes commuting distance of Bristol. And they have definite ideas about what they'll be getting up to once they find the right place. We both like animals. I want to keep chickens, uh, maybe ducks, uh, I want to keep goats, I want to have some land where I can potter around um, in some outbuildings and sheds and that would be fantastic for me. I'm fine just watching him do that. <laughs> then we like to get more horses um, because we need to keep a, a companion horse for Reuben, the horse the daughter's horse when he's, uh, when he's staying with us. So the outside of a property will need land for our buyers and they know what they want inside too. We're looking for a house with um, three bedrooms or possibly two 
at least one reception, good sized reception room, a house that's light and airy, a kitchen diner would be lovely, um, doors from the kitchen leading out to the garden would be fantastic. And then outside I think we're looking for a minimum of half an acre. Uh, we tend to fall in love with things very quickly. We, we, when we go into a house we either love it or hate it straight away. Probably not hate it, but we, we, we always know if we love something I know um, whether straight I hate away. things. Yeah. I, I, I know as soon as I walk in that I hate it, I hate it. Well, love it or hate it, one thing's for sure, and that's the finances. Our budget for this move is a maximum of £500,000. Sue and Steve have lived in the same house in Bristol for 24 years. Having brought up their family there, the house has served its purpose and they're ready to start a new life in the country. A move that Steve seems to have been wanting to make for some time. Now they are self-confessed love it or hate it people who will know in an instant whether a property is for them. And that does make me just a little bit nervous. I'm just hoping we can manage to get them through the front door of the properties we've found. Within our search area in Gloucestershire, Steve and Sue need a location with a manageable commute to Bristol for work and family reasons. We found three intriguing properties for them to consider and as ever I'll be asking them to guess the price of each before I reveal it. The last option is of course our mystery house which aims to take them somewhere completely unexpected. Good morning, Steve and Sue. Thank you for bringing me to Gloucestershire. We haven't travelled very far, though, have we, for the two of you? No, we need to stay within commutable distance, really, to Bristol. Why are you so passionate about this move? Um, well, I've, I've always lived in Bristol, but I've always loved the countryside. So um, I think it's time to move out and get some animals, some chickens and goats and some space. That's a big change. What are the top three things you have to have in the property to make you make this move? Um, a house that's light and airy. I really like light and space. Um, the location away from a really busy road. I'm going to move out from the city. I want something quieter. For me, I've got to have some land, I've got to have some outbuildings uh, and some space. See, none of that sounds too difficult. It all sounds quite easy to do. I've got three lovely houses Valley. Brockweir has many amenities that will appeal to our buyers with a village store and a charming local pub. House number one is a recently renovated country cottage which dates back to the 19th century. Here we are, our first property and I'm pleased that you're smiling. <laughs> what do you think of it? I think it's beautiful too. I think the uh, the house looks very much up together, and the, and the garden's big. Mm. Beautiful setting. Mm -hmm. um, the only thing that worries me is is the slope. Okay. Having had a house built on in a slope, um, that's the only thing at the moment that's just worrying me. But. I'm really looking forward to looking inside the house. Should we have a look? Yes, please. Go on. While Sue's not sure about the garden, I think that when she sees the kitchen diner inside this house, it could be a very different story. So, come on through. What do you think? Yeah, I love it. Yeah, I think it's a really lovely kitchen. It's very modern, very new, very clean. Light. Yes, light. The magic <laughs> word. <laughs> I love light. the table so that you can eat in here and it's a really sociable place. And the, the um, door's out to the garden. That, yeah. is just, that was just what you asked for, wasn't it? First impression is very nice. Well, out down here, just to give you the layout, you've also got uh, a downstairs shower room and toilet. And of course, there's a living room for you to settle in on cosy winter's evenings or even summer's days like today. Come on. Well, with the kitchen definitely a hit, 
Let's see how they rate the lounge area. Right, so this would be your living room. Again, you've got doors slightly smaller, but leading out onto the garden. And it's, a, I think, a nice bit of space. You've also got the wood burner over yeah. there, so yeah. bringing in a touch of the rustic into yeah, we another like the modern wood room. Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely, yeah. It's funny, the ceiling feels lower. Well, we're now in the original yeah. cottages. Yeah. But then, as I said, I mean, you've got that big space there. So, you, I don't, I mean, how do you guys live? Often people spend a lot of time in the kitchen. Yeah. So, where you're sitting and having meals, and then you do come for your snug time. Yeah. Yeah, it's it's cozy. Cozy. Yeah. I think that's absolutely right. That's how we do live. We're in, in the kitchen diner at the moment and then into and the, the garden, front room and, and the garden. I think it would be good to have another space. So I'm not good. convinced that we need another room. I mean, give it, it's just the two of us now, yeah. basically. You know, the, the younger daughter's away at college most of the time. And I think two rooms is enough. There may just be two main rooms downstairs, but they are very large ones. However, the upstairs is surprisingly spacious, with the family bathroom and four bedrooms, which are all quite generous in size and a perfect space for the girls when they come to stay. But we're taking a look at the main bedroom. I wanted to bring you down to this end, to this one, because stud wall oh. there and yeah. another little smaller room which has got two singles in it so it's not that much smaller behind so i was thinking mm. this could be one big master suite i think that's a good idea take that down move mm. that yeah take that wall out and you have got a really big space i don't think we need four bedrooms okay. so having mm. a large master bedroom is much better yeah well, let's have a look in that other space and then we can talk a bit more clearly about what you can do with it. Yeah. Okay. So, finally, the smallest of the four bedrooms. So, I said they managed to fit two singles in, but not much else. However, what's important to you is, of course, the outside space. And we yes. touched on it at the start, but let's go back out there and really talk about how much land you get and, of course, how much this would cost. Brilliant. Okay, off to you. Thank you. We know that Steve loves his space, so it's crucial that this property has enough room to build his shed and keep some animals. Let's see if we can make his dreams come true. Oh, it's so pretty out here, isn't it? Beautiful. Really gorgeous. Yeah. And all in all, you get half an acre here okay if you're looking for space for the horse which i know you are you'd have to rent some land nearby and there's fields nearby well you get half an acre you get this beautiful house but it all comes at a price oh. so i'm going to start with you sue ah uh, right well we haven't been looking in this area of gloucestershire so i'm not quite sure but um i'll go for four three five I'm going to go a little bit higher. I'm going to go 4.65. Well, I've got to say, your guesses aren't too bad. Neither of you were right, though, of course. <laughs> <laughs> it's actually on the market at £449,000. OK. So somewhere in between. Plenty of food for thought. Mm -hmm. Go, think about it, and then tell me your thoughts later on, OK? OK. okay. All right, see you later. Thank you. Well, there you go. I think a good reaction to our first property. Sue clearly wants to focus on the house and needs some more space. But I'm very pleased that Steve was happy with the half an acre of land and they were looking at how they could really make this their home. So, well within their budget, at a shade under £450,000, this property has the large and airy kitchen diner Sue wanted, Four bedrooms, so there's enough room for their daughters to stay. Garden access from the downstairs rooms and half an acre of land for Steve. My first impressions of the property were very good. It looks, um, from the outside, it looks up to date. It looks uh, clean and tidy. And I think that was borne out from when we went inside the property. They've obviously done a lot of work on it. Well, when we arrived, I was a bit alarmed at the steepness 
of the drive. Um, I'm sort of imagining myself in the winter, sort of, um, needing crampons to actually get to the house. But the house is, is beautiful, it looks beautiful, it's very picturesque. It's um, set amongst woodland and it's beautiful. Feeling good? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Look around. Thank Lovely. You. Are you happy with that start? Yeah, very good start. But it is just the start. We have got another property to see, so let's hit the road. Okay. As Steve is interested in keeping chickens and ducks, and both our buyers are keen on wildlife, while in Gloucestershire, we've arranged for them to visit a very special nature reserve. They're being shown round by the reserve's manager, Dave Paintner. Right, well, welcome to, to Slimbridge. Slimbridge is the, the headquarters of the, the Wildfowl and, and Wetlands Trust, founded in, in 1946 by Peter Scott, son of the uh, Scott of the Antarctic, so that's the, the connection there. But Peter's um, idea was to get people interested in, in conservation. And what you'll see in here in the middle of the centre, the collection of, of captive birds from all over the world, were used as a way to try and draw people uh, to, to come in here. And for that reason, he, he, he's been um, talked of as, uh, as the founder of modern conservation. I'm going to kick you out properly first. So if you want to take a, a pair okay. of binoculars um, each, Thank you. And if you want to join me, and we're, we'll head out and start exploring the wetlands. Okay. Lovely. Okay. Thank Come you. Encompassing 325 hectares, Slimbridge is the largest of the charity's nine wetland centres and provides a safe home for the world's largest collection of swans, ducks, flamingos and geese around 70,000 in all. Many of the species here are rare or endangered and the centre is involved in research, breeding and conservation programmes to protect these species and their habitats. Lots of hides scattered around here and a whole set of different wetlands, some of them created, others uh, like this one are just flooded, we control the water levels through here just to try and optimise the habitat for, um, um, for birds. A few things scattered around here at the moment, black, flocks of black-tailed godwits feeding uh, away out there, um, they're the ones of Sivin, if you have a look with the, the binoculars you can see them uh, sort of probing the, uh, uh, the mud with their, their bills, looking for food, looking for tiny uh, midge larvae in the, uh, in the mud there. But the real special one, and you see the big white bird um, just, just sat there at the back. Now that's something quite special, that's actually a, a spoonbill. And that's a very rare visitor. That's quite a rare one. It's increasing. We're seeing a, a, a few these days, but it's, it's still a special day when we, uh, uh, when we see one. But hides aren't the only way to see the wildlife here. Four years ago, the centre opened one kilometre of water channels that you can explore by canoe, with the chance to get closer to dragonflies, warblers, ducks, and maybe even a water bowl. The canoe trail here is open to the public. It's great fun, but it's also a great way of seeing some of the wildlife that's rather more difficult to see uh, in other situations. So uh, just look ahead, if for example, see the family of, of moorhens, little tiny mo baby moorhens up there. Just getting close to stuff like that is, is just absolutely fantastic. In the last century, over half of the world's wetlands have been lost through land drainage, mostly due to housing and business developments. The Wildfowl and Wetlands Trust is aiming to address that balance by creating their own protected areas while educating visitors about the importance of saving the ones we already have. But now, after all of that bird watching, it's time to resume our property search and find Steve and Sue somewhere to make a nest of their very own. Second property of the day. You've got fabulous views again into the valley. Beautiful. Pretty spectacular. Mm. And a gorgeous cottage. What do you think? Well, 
setting is amazing, isn't it? The fields around it. Yeah, I, I think the, the setting, the views are great. The house itself, I love the look of the house from the outside. Yeah, it's interesting. Yeah, definitely. Well, the yeah. first property we saw was very modern inside yeah. in the interior. I would say this one is much more rustic, it's got much more country feeling. Do you like those sorts of properties? Yeah. Yeah, I do. Mm, I yeah. do. I'm, and certainly if, if <laughs> things need updating or anything like that, then that's grand. That's grand? Yeah. You're happy to do it. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's the spirit, Steve because I think they'll find there's plenty of potential inside this property. Right. I said rustic. I think it delivers. We've got this as a feature fireplace topped off with half an acre of garden and two acres of paddock. All these outbuildings, Steve, you went I know, I know. Them. All these sheds and outbuildings. You'd be in seventh heaven, wouldn't you? I would. You? You've got uh, a pen for, well, goats. Livestock. Yeah, yeah livestock, goats. goats. Leading onto the paddock, which yeah. is really good grazing. A fantastic grazing, that paddock, for the horse. For the horse. Fantastic really space. Nice. Yes. The house had lots of character and huge potential, although it already had a really nice feel to it, particularly the kitchen leading on to the extension, the sun extension, sun room, and, and that was lovely. Fantastic. I could live here. Um, I like the situation. I like the house. I like the garden. I'm just concerned about the, uh, the location generally, whether that would suit us having to commute back to Bristol. Hello. Read yourselves at home in there. Yeah, we have very much so. Oh, what did you think of the outbuildings? I thought they were great. Stables, sheds, a workshop, yeah. everything that I wanted. Suitably impressed, but that was just day one. We have still got more to see. As the evening falls over Gloucestershire, it marks the end of day one of our property search. Steve has been trying to persuade his wife Sue to move to the country for nearly 20 years. Now their two daughters have grown up, she has finally given her blessing for a move to Gloucestershire. So far we've given them plenty to think about with our first two properties. But coming up, our mystery house could be the one they've been waiting for. Oh, what have you done? <laughs> oh, we've actually really got you, haven't we? Yeah, peaceful. And I take my life in my hands and join the circus. Oh, don't, whatever you do, don't do that. After years of persuasion by Steve, it does seem that Sue is finally ready to move out of Bristol. But one thing's for sure after yesterday. Whilst for Steve, the outside land is the most important, for Sue, we have got to get the house just right. Now, I do think the mystery property can deliver for both of them. The thing is, to make them both happy, we're going to have to push them just that little bit further. We've got a bit of a journey to get to our mystery house. Uh, how are you feeling about that? Um, interested again. <laughs> uh, we seem to be going across the bridge again. <laughs> across the water. Yeah, I've got to come to terms with that. <laughs> are we going too far? As long as you've got good road access for commuting back, you know, every day, then I think that's fine. I think it really surprised me yesterday as to how quick we got back from the Forest of Dean. <laughs> we are making progress. It was all so that we could deliver this property to you. Oh, it's fabulous. It is beautiful. Really, Absolutely really nice. Gorgeous. Oh, what have you done? <laughs> oh! <laughs> We've actually really got you, haven't we? Yeah. Beautiful. <laughs> Absolutely gorgeous, and the setting is just amazing. 
It's taken your breath away. It has. It's made me quite emotional. <laughs> Good. <laughs> well, uh, we've had the perfect result on your initial reactions. I think it's time we looked inside to see <laughs> how it delivers there. Okay. Come on. If there was ever a response I want to a mystery property, that was it. Let's see if they feel the same on the inside. Step on in. Oh, wow. <laughs> Another wow on a yeah. big intake of breath. This is really, really nice. You, you, like, speak, you like it, don't I'm you? I'm speechless. <laughs> yeah. That's oh, that's action. beautiful. And the fireplace is such a centrepiece. What do you think about the structure? I think it's absolutely wonderful. They've kept the main uh, beam structure of the old barn, and it's really impressive. It's, it's just grand to hold that. Well, they're still under the spell of this house, and the next area should be just what Sue is looking for. It's actually quite a big kitchen up here. Well designed, I think. Mm. No, it's right. lovely. It's a lovely kitchen. I love the floor. Lots of work surfaces and that lovely door out into the garden, yeah, which is great. The garden. And they've even created a little breakfast bar. Yeah. I think it's well designed, so you can sit up here and get another aspect yeah. of your living area. Yeah, no, it's beautiful. Lovely. You've done well. Yes. <laughs> Very well. I know you've said quite a few times, house, yeah. It's oh, more well, about the land, but I love this, this one. I love this. This the, the, yeah. uh, the barn conversion is just fantastic. Mm. Yes, it's so, uh, really what I was looking for. Despite what we said about wanting to do work, it is really nice that actually it it is done, and you can just move in. You can just move you can in. Move in tomorrow. Wow. <laughs> Did you hear that? <laughs> did you hear that? I did, yeah. You've got to yeah. sell that house quickly. Yeah, I know. <laughs> so Sue's definitely sold on the downstairs of this stunning conversion. But they'll find there's a lot less going on upstairs, which is where we're heading to have a look at the master bedroom. So this is the only bedroom on the upper level. So I'm nice. guessing it would be yours. <laughs> yeah. Reviews like that to make yes, up to. Definitely. Yeah. That's a good size as well. And again, retain the beams up here. Kept yeah. the beams, you've got the ceiling height, the yeah. grandeur. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I can feel you relaxing. Yeah, I, gosh, to come home to this would just be fantastic, wouldn't it? Mm. At the end of a day, a busy day, to come home and just relax and... Yeah, it's just gorgeous. And feed the chickens. Feed your chickens <laughs> or alpacas, the horse, and maybe have a relaxing bath. Oh, oh nice. nice. <laughs> Lovely. Have a look in there. That's a nice old suite. Yeah. Oh, it's lovely. There are a further three good-sized rustic-style bedrooms on the ground floor of this property that would be ideal for the girls' visits. And there's also a shower room which doubles as a boot room with garden access. Great for cleaning up after feeding the livestock. But how much of that vital space is there outside for those goats, chickens and horses? We're about to find out. Now from back here, you get another look at this house, and I think it's just beautiful. Yeah. Yes, it is. Now, this is about an acre. Right. That you've got here. And you've, of course, got the outbuildings around the other side of the property, yeah. stables. How do you feel about this amount of land? Is I've, that enough for you? Yeah, that's enough. An acre's just enough. Here's the deal. Yeah, OK. <laughs> With this property, you do just get the one acre. However, the owner also owns another nine acres just down there. Nine. A meadow, yeah. and that's up for negotiation. Okay. So you could buy another nine acres at around about six thousand an acre, mm -hmm. yeah. or you could rent. She's willing to rent, so you mm -hmm. could see how it goes, see how much you need. Yeah, that's it's all meadowland at the moment, perfect for the horse. Yeah. Good grazing. Yes, Good meadow. Now we have to consider how much it will cost you okay. to live this dream. <sighs> okay, the house. Acre of land, I'd say four ninety. Okay. Four ninety. 
do you know what? Because it's over here in Usk, it's a lovely place, I'm going to go lower, 475. Oh, Steve. No. <laughs> you haven't got any better at this. <laughs> you win again. <laughs> this is on the market at £495,000, so you are very close. Well, I think you should enjoy this sunshine go and indulge your senses wandering around this wonderful property and i will see you later on when you've had some time to mull it all over okay, okay. thank okay. you what a cracking result i've got to say i'm a bit shocked i didn't think sue would love it that much but it just goes to show the right house despite the slightly further location could help them to achieve their dream just within their budget at £495,000, this property gives Steve and Sue everything they've ever dreamed of. Four bedrooms, a beautiful open plan living area with a kitchen leading onto the garden. Outside it has all the outbuildings and stables they need and there's an acre of land with the opportunity to buy or rent more. So that's the land. That's the meadow that's that's on offer. Just knowing that you've got all that land or some of it that you can um, you can either rent or buy. Yeah, it's perfect. It's fantastic, isn't it? perfect. The location really appeals, but it's quiet, it's peaceful, it's it's beautiful views, beautiful countryside. Inside is lovely. Um, they've retained a lot of the character from the old barn, the uh, the large beams and uh, the layout itself is, is really nice. I think it's brilliant, absolutely brilliant. I think you've done really, really well, absolutely great. Uh, I think I was quite shocked when we came across the bridge and headed into Wales, because we'd never, ever considered moving into Wales. But I must admit, when I first saw the property, I just felt the but, uh, the peace and tranquility of the area, I was just blown away. It's beautiful here. <laughs> Absolutely gorgeous. Surrounded by the lavender. I've fallen in love with it. What about you two? Yeah, it's fantastic. Yeah, yeah we both love really it. Really lovely. Good, good. Well, you certainly had a bit of an emotional journey over the last couple of days. Yeah, I think so. Yes. She's taken us out of our comfort zone. Well, let's find some of you to sit back in Gloucestershire. And it was here in the year 2000 that local girl Nell Gifford set up a circus which has gone on to receive national acclaim. Her painted wagons regularly tour the southwest of England with a show which has played to over 250,000 people since it started. And I'm here to find out more. Yes, I've joined the circus. OK, I've taken a few hours out to come and meet the founders of Gifford Circus, created by a Gloucestershire family for the local rural community. Hello, Nell. Hi. Lovely to meet you. And congratulations. This is very impressive, putting together this whole circus. What inspired you? When I was 18, I joined a circus in America, and I just fell, only for a few months, but I fell in love with the travelling lifestyle and the theatre and the animals and all the families that spoke different languages and circus performers. What our idea was, um, myself and my husband, Tossi, we started it, and what we wanted to do was make a village green circus, kind of a handmade show, like everything that you see, like box office, it's all built by us. I could really feel that there's a real community spirit uh, just wandering around, and, and locally people do speak a lot about it. You know, it's something they really enjoy. Is that what you envisioned? For me, it's like, this is what I'd most like to see, like, dancers, m live music, horses. It's my idea of heaven, and I kind of just thought everybody would love it, actually. Well, with a couple of hours until curtain up, I'm off to meet some of the acts on the bill of this rural circus. And I'm getting involved in a bit of fire juggling, with the help of Tweedy the Clown. So, uh, this is perfectly safe, isn't it, Tweedy? 
Yeah, he'll be fine. But we shouldn't try this at home. <laughs> no, you definitely shouldn't try this at home. We probably shouldn't try it here either, but never mind. Never mind. There's, there's the thing with circus, it's, um, it's all frills. Frills and Well, that's it, isn't it? You want yes. to entertain the people, audience. People on the edge of the seats. And you're a regular in the show, aren't you, year after year? I am, yes. And, and that's the thing, I have to come up with new... New oh, I can feel the things. heat already. It, it is. It, it's, it is hot. It's pretty hot. <laughs> no, it'd be okay. fine. So again, we just need to stay absolutely still, <laughs> and we'll all be Stop fine. See, oh, don't. Whatever you do, don't do that. Miss don't Kai. do that. <laughs> have you got hairspray in your hair? I Oh, I should have asked that earlier. Oh, <laughs> Never mind. We'll be all right. <laughs> Nice. We should have bought some marshmallows. Thank Yay! you! Oh, God. Oh, yeah. I I Don't leave me. Well, after over 20 years, we've had an emotional couple of days, haven't we, <laughs> trying to get you two out into the countryside? Yeah. So, the first property, what were your first impressions? Um, first impressions were that it was very nice. Um, there wasn't enough room downstairs for Sue, I think. And the entrance to the property, you know, it was rather much of a slope. It was vertical, and, actually, wasn't it? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then the, uh, the garden continued down on the slope. And yeah. uh, although there was a fair bit of land, uh, I think that would probably put us off. Mm. There was just something about the house that just didn't do it for me. Now, with property number two, I had to say I was quite impressed with how uh, how you took to it. It was a bit of a project, but you seemed to really like it. Yeah, we did. Yeah, the land was perfect for you, wasn't it? Yes, it was. It had enough space. It had outbuildings, sheds, uh, two acres, a pond, half an acre garden. It was really, really good outside for me. And the yeah. house was interesting. It was it was full of character. And uh, it was obvious that the owner had done a lot of work on it already. One of the things I think with this journey has been taking you out of your comfort zone and, and getting you to take that leap and go, I'm serious about, yeah. about this move. And yes. Well, the Mystery House certainly tested you on that, didn't it? It was a beautiful property. It was absolutely fantastic. It was the real dream of rural living. It was brilliant. The, um, the conversion would be done really, really well. The, uh, the beams, I love those big, big, heavy beams throughout the property. Fantastic property. So, three great properties, but I really need to know, because I'm a bit unsure as to whether we've done enough to actually get you to make this move, Sue. <laughs> 20-odd years in the making. It certainly challenged my thinking. I think that last property made me really want to be extremely rural. I think you've done a great job to get Sue to this position. <laughs> um, I, I think that's easily commutable distance for both of us. Mm. No problem with that. Will you put an offer in on our mystery house? We still need to sell ours, but we're going to really push to sell it because we really need now to sell it and, and move on. It's ready. I'm ready. I'm ready. Yeah. And I think, I think as soon as we sell our property, we, we will definitely be in a position to put an offer in on the mystery house. Well, Sue and Steve, it's been a real pleasure. I've so enjoyed spending time with you and helping you on this journey, step by step, yeah. into your dream.
幸福。